what's up internet so in this video we are going to look at Tracita and you will see how to use Tracita in your Vim by the way you will find a link to um, this presentation in the video description below so what is Tracita Tracita is a parsing library that parses some text and returns something meaningful usually parsing rules are built into the parser but in Tracita there's a separate parser generator tool where you can generate Passes and use that using parsing library. So Tracita has some advantages over traditional parsers. Tracita can be used generally for many programming languages, and it's really fast. Um, error handling is really awesome. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and it's dependency free. Uh, that's not that important for a regular user, but if you are planning to integrate. Uh, trace it into some kind of an editor then that's really important because uh, dependency free software is um, easy to manage so let's learn a little bit more about trace it there's a playground you can play around with trace it um, I'm going to use that in a second um, first let's see what a syntax tree looks like so this is the playground and I'm using JavaScript parser then let's create a class let's call it test I'm going to create a constructor as you can see as I'm typing it's going to generate this syntax tree now program represents the module or the entire file you have then the class declaration identifier and the name of the class then the class body and likewise there are nodes for method as well there are a few numbers right next to each and every node in the syntax tree first set represents the start point of the um, that particular node then we have the end point of the particular node let's take um, class identifier name of the class so it starts in the first line zero means the first line of the original source code we have here then 6 means the column let's count it we are in the first line and 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is where the class name or the identifier starts and it ends in the same line but in 10th column so let's count 6 7 8 9 10 so that's the name of the class that's what a syntax tree looks like basically now let's talk about backtracking um, we are back in the playground I'm going to create a class so once you have entered the keyword in a class you have to you have to enter a name for the class otherwise it's going to be an error but sometimes it's not going to be incremental for example if you have a um, variable declaration like this this is totally legal JavaScript you know you can add parentheses for no reason and we have you know expression um, as the value but I can append something and change the syntax tree um, uh, syntax tree of the value let's make it an arrow function now the value is an arrow function not an expression now there is an issue um, traditional parsers will pass everything from scratch you know build the syntax tree from scratch if you have thousand lines it's going to read thousand lines from the beginning and it will build the entire syntax tree but tree sitter does not do that it's trying to uh, pass incrementally um, but we have to change something that we have used in the syntax tree or already existing syntax tree so it's doing something awesome let me remove the arrow function now at the moment there are two possibilities one is an expression one is an arrow function so what it does is it's going to create two separate branches or two separate syntax tree branches for those two possibilities so at the moment it's selecting the first branch which is an expression but when we change it to something like this so right now the first branch is not valid so it's going to discard that and it's going to use the second branch 
or the second syntax tree branch which is arrow function branch so that's something really awesome Chrissy tells us okay the next point is incremental passing um, I kind of covered that in the previous point but let's say we have a class like this and I want to update something in the existing tree now I'm going to change the method name to hello all right now it's going to take the entire syntax tree the existing syntax tree and it will check where the change happened and it will go through the source code and uh, mark the nodes that that got changed now it's going to rebuild the entire syntax tree but um, when it's rebuilding the entire syntax tree it's going to check um, what is changed and what is not so it can reuse already existing uh, syntax tree for example um, it can use method definition for print1 and print2 it's not going to change but it will rebuild the third method definition which is hello method so that's incremental passing and it's going to um, save so much time when it comes to really large um, source code uh, files that contains you know thousands of lines all right our last point is error recovery now this is something really awesome let me start type something invalid let's do for if and we're going to have some kind of a condition here then curly braces now if you look at the syntax tree it identifies the statement as if statement not for why not for it's the first keyword we have here um, it's taking it as if as I said previously again it's going to build two syntax trees but it's taking if condition um, syntax tree over for um, now let me change this to let i equals zero then let's do the condition i less than 10 now if you look at the syntax tree it identifies the statement as for statement so it's more likely to be a for statement because we have a um, variable declaration and we have a condition it cannot be a if condition so it's going to drop the if condition syntax tree branch then it's going to keep a for statement um, syntax tree branch um, in, in, in the syntax tree so that's something uh, tree sitter does a uh, really awesome and we have the error you know it's not going to break everything after the error but it will try to you know um, um, build the syntax tree uh, while there is an error so that's something really awesome okay now let's talk about neovim tree sitter it's a um, neovim plugin it's not going to work in vim by the way only in neovim um, it's a simple interface for uh, tree sitter and there are some built-in features really awesome built-in features neovim tree sitter has um, passes for many programming languages then they have commands for for managing you know it's kind of acting like a package manager for tree sitter we can install uh, passes update remove enable disable and likewise we have a few commands and um, some vim functions as well then we have syntax highlighting um, in many presentations uh, they have highlighted that tree sitter has way better syntax highlighting over other solutions available but in my personal experience with uh, coc nvim and you know i tried uh, syntax uh, highlighting in vs code as well actually it's not really impressive but it's not bad then we have incremental selection again this is not something new in neovim tree sitter there are some uh, some language servers that provide selection or text objects then we have indentation i'm not quite sure how this is working but that's the thing um, then we have code folding we will try these features in a minute but uh, let's go through the requirements and in installation process so for requirements uh, you're going to need neovim 0.5 or higher version at the moment 0.5 is available in the nightly build it's not yet in the stable build so the installation is simple um, you can use the github username and github uh, repository name 
and after that make sure to ts update i'm using a package manager called um, pacman and it does not support post hooks so i'm going to have to um, run this command manually and to install passes for programming languages all you have to do is run ts install and set the um, language i believe you can use all keyword but i couldn't find any document documentation on that um, so that would be ts install space all so this is the file where i keep uh, track of all the plugins i have so i'm going to add neovim tc into that i'll save the file and let's uh, resource the file to install the plugin we have i already have installed that so it's going to skip while i was editing i just realized i forgot to show you how to ts update and ts install so once you're done with the installation of the plugin you can close the editor and reopen the editor now you should be able to run ts um, update you can hit tab and it's going to autocomplete if uh, if ts is installed successfully and um, let's do all all right update is done now you can install language passes so ts install and you can set the language let's install language parser for java and hit enter i already have it but i'm going to reinstall, reinstall it you can see it's downloading and compiling now it's done so that's the way um you 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 will be installing um language parsers so back to the original video next we have configurations by default all the modules are going to be disabled for neovim tracer we have to enable them explicitly in the configuration we have um, so we are going to set up highlighting incremental selection and indentation and we have some options for um, code folding so this is my init file for neovim and i'm going to add the configuration i'll explain what this one does so we have highlighting and we are going to enable highlighting otherwise it's by default um, set to false and we have something called custom captures i couldn't find any documentation on this one but i could find some source code and there are some list of um, capture groups and highlight groups in the main nvim tree sitter repository you can go into lua folder inside there you have the you know main module inside that you will find highlight.lua file in the file we have uh, capture groups and we have uh, color groups so you can map any capture group to any uh, color group you have for example you can map um, keyword capture group to for example ts a string um, color group uh, that means it's going to take the color of strings you know default color of strings and um, change it in keywords so keyword color and string color is going to be the same i have not enabled that but if i want to do that this is how it would look like and next we have incremental selection we have initialized the selection using this gnn um, gnn key bind in normal mode and node incremental i'll show you that in action in a second then we have scope incremental usually in java uh, we have you know curly, curly braces for the scope and node decremental down here we have enabled indentation and finally we have code folding we are changing uh, fold method to expression and we have we have defined the expression to a, a function in uh, near m3 sitter all right now you can save the configuration and close and reopen the file now look at the syntax highlighting we have here by default and you'll see the uh, see some changes in syntax highlighting when we restart the editor so close the editor and reopen init.lua file and we have code folding by default and syntax highlighting so that's awesome okay so far so good now let's try um, these things in in a python project okay now i'm in a python file you can see 
the color of keywords and a string are the same because we have set the configuration keyword and uh, a string are going to be the going to be in the same color now let's try code folding it's kind of weird um, I would not use TS code folding because um, it's sometimes you know give you weird um, weird results I can do is it C for some reason it's not working for the in in the first try so let's do again and code has folded I can do is it O to open the code folding and let's try scope uh, selection I'll go to predictions and let's do GNN and again GRN again GRN so it has selected the entire thing now let's go back let's try GNN to initialize the selection then again GRC for scope selection now it's selecting the entire scope um, you know method scope if I repeat the same thing it's going to select the entire class we have so that's something awesome um, I think we will see some um, text objects in the future some you know really useful uh, text objects like you know method text objects and stuff like that but for now uh, we got only you know incremental and decremental selections all right we are almost done um, so if the color scheme you are using is not supported for tree sitter or neobeam tree sitter make sure to change uh, it to some some kind of a uh, color scheme that uh, that's supported by neobeam tree sitter because sometimes it will give you some weird um, you know uh, color uh, sorry syntax highlighting you know sometimes you know method name and keyword in the same color or something like that um, you will find some list of uh, color color schemes in these links um, and you will find the link to this presentation in the video description so that's pretty much it that's actually all I know about tree sitter um, so thanks for watching have a nice day